Well, if you if you enjoy drawing and painting, I think you might you might definitely enjoy um, model making. Um, Miss Manjarres, Cathedral of Notre Dame. For your history one class, Crystal, that's true. Oh, and that seems like yesterday. That's actually last fall, no, twenty nineteen. And and you made it out of a uh, out of a. Uh, with which that's kind of what the, for those of you guys that have made models before um william isis vivian nadim um crystal what uh, what materials were you guys using for your models what material were your models out of I'm just curious you know i mean i, I don't know i don't know some of you guys uh, have used before. Um, Nadim, it was three tree houses connected to each other, and its purpose was to showcase and store art. All right, Nadim, is that the intro assignment? I think that sounds like intro, right? The tree house with the the with how to showcase the, the art. Um, William says, in terms of materials, illustration board, foam for the base. And glue, of course. All right. Uh, crystal, bright basswood. Vivian, cardstock. Christian, cardboard. Natalia, cardboard also. Um, Nadim, right, talking about the treehouse, we use the wood. I remember its exact name, as well as plexiglass, foam base, glue, etc. Um, Wood. I think that might be basswood. Be basswood. Uh, Isis. I have used toothpicks, <laughs> foam board, and cardboard. All right. And a type of wood, but I don't remember its name. And I think uh, it might be basswood. All right. Isis. Uh, I think Nadim agrees with that. All right. Good. Well. Those are basically the, the materials that we're going to be using, right? Foam board, um, basswood. Well, it's going to be divided, right? I mean, we're going to be doing study model first, and then the final one. At least that's the idea. You know, we have kind of uh, to work with the uh, with the schedule, you know, and the weeks that we have left. But the idea is that we first do a study model out of poster board, foam board, uh, and other materials, and then you know we transition to basswood for the final one. Uh, with plexi as well, plexiglass, which is the clear material um, that you know I'll show you guys uh, later. Um, and so first, right? So so good job. I, I think that that's great that, that so many of you guys have worked with models before. And if you have not, that's okay. Um, so again, for those of you guys just joining in, uh, we're going to be doing, uh, you know, kind of like a model making 101 today in class where we're going to be working with three materials, uh, paper, um, poster board, and foam board, all right? Um, each has their own, you know, kind of uh, characteristics, peculiarities, if you will, and then going into basswood and plexiglass, those also have, you know, a different kind of... Uh, um, characteristics right so we're gonna try something different as the whole semester has been right uh, it's the first time that we cover um, model making 101 online right? I mean from home you know it has its plus and it has you know I mean some some difficulties right I mean evidently the most you know well, the most evident one being that I'm not able to immediately go see you and, and see your work, right? So usually we'll be a studio, each of you guys is in a desk, and each of you guys will be working together, and you will be seeing what your classmates are doing along the way, right? So usually we're seated in groups of four, you know, you have a home group that I call, and then the four of you are working simultaneously, of course, each in your own assignment, Right. But not only do you, you know, do, not only do I give you the lecture in class of how to do things, but once we break into the, the hands on part of the class, 
you can see what your classmates are doing. And I think that's probably the most um, unfortunate uh, thing that we cannot see what everyone is doing um, at the moment because I may teach you a way of doing things, but turns out, right, as, as it's kind of like evident that there's more than one way of, of, of doing things, right? There's more than of one way of doing things correctly. Uh, there's uh, there's uh, ways of expediting things, right? Um, the more that you do something, the more obviously that you understand what it takes to get there. And once you have seen the movie, right? Once you have gone through the process once, you start kind of connecting dots and be like, wait a second. So that took me a while and I didn't realize that I could I could have done it differently, right? And you start kind of learning, I don't know if shortcuts, it's a, it's a good way of saying it. I don't know if it's about being, you know, cutting corners, but it's more about efficiency, right? It's more about how to work, work smart, right? Uh, work at a, I don't know if fast pace is a good one, right? But work at a productive pace, right? Um, and most importantly, have quality work, which again, is one of the main things that I, I won't be able to give you feedback as, as accessibly as I could do in person, but we're going to try it out, right? I mean, there's no other option, really. However, I think some of the, um, you know, some of the ups on this is that, well, you'll be working at home. Uh, hopefully you can claim an area and a space that you can kind of take over and, and you don't have to move in and out, right? I mean, perhaps you might have to eat dinner there. You might have to clear the table at some point, but, but maybe not, right? So I think one of the, um, you know, one of the drawbacks of, uh, or one of the disadvantages of being in a studio uh, design one or two is that uh, while we're in school, you guys don't get to um, have a designated desk, right? What that means is that you come in for class, you work on your stuff, and whenever the next class is coming in, you have to, of course, evacuate that area, that desk, and, you know, let the next person work there. Versus when you're in design three and four, you guys do what's called nesting. Each of you guys get assigned a desk and that's your desk for the semester. And that's really nice because that's your desk for the semester, right? I mean, that's your area, that's your space. You don't have to move in and out so that you can really have a setup. So since right now you're working at home, I recommend that each of you guys find that place to have a setup, right? A setup that whether you're done or not with the assignment, you can always come back and keep working on it. Now, I know it's it's different for each of you guys, right? I mean, it depends on the situation. Some of you guys might be at work right now, right? I mean, and you know, you're like, well, I mean, I really can't work on this here. But uh, some of you guys might be in apartments where the space is kind of limited or narrow. Um, some of you guys might be, I don't know, maybe with a relative um, or maybe again, like I said, in your bedroom. The idea is that you start finding places and opportunities, right, to, to get this done. It's going to be model making for model making and drawing for the rest of the semester, which we have about four to five weeks. So you are going to need a place to kind of be hands on. All right. Um, you know, uh, coffee table boxes, um, coffee table boxes, coffee tables. Um, you know, in the center of your living room, those are great. Right? I mean, if you don't mind sitting on the floor and working there, um, like I said, kitchen areas and dining areas, well, as long as maybe, again, you're not interfering with uh, your family or, you know, you, you're, you're whoever you you live with, um, you know, that you're not kind of like on the way, of, of on their way. Um, and just the desk, right? Um, so you can see, right now here a little bit of uh of my setup right um you know i like this this desk right here this table uh this one has a uh, oops, sorry on this uh, you know it has a crank right here meaning that it can go up and down 
right? So I can, you know, bring this table higher or lower. I see that right now there's some uh, supplies right here, you know. Uh, tweet T-square is gonna be very helpful if you have one. Uh, I really recommend that it's metal, right? I think most of all uh, nowadays are metal, but if you happen to have maybe an old school one that it's a plastic or, uh, I'm sorry, a wood, uh, don't, uh, you don't use the wood ones to cut and definitely do not use the clear ones, right, to cut. Um, I really, really, really want to stress that uh, model making is fun and it's uh, entertaining and it's uh, um, immersive, right? You kind of like get into the assignment really, really, you know, kind of like in a meditative way, right? I mean, you're just working on it and Time just goes by. However, um, it's a it's a physical activity. You can get tired, right? And what happens when we're tired, right? What happens when we get tired? Well, we're not as sharp, perhaps, as we might be when we're rested, right? So, what does that mean? Well, that there's the risk for accidents to happen, all right? And I would say. Kind of like it's to say, right? I mean, it's not whether you'll have an accident or not. It's, um, you know, will you be prepared for when that happens, right? It is, I mean, of course, I really, really hope that it never happens to you, but it's pretty much inevitable that there's going to be some slips, right? And, you know, we are using, you know, blades. Um, later on, we use other tools. So safety first, of course, you know, be alert. Um, and see how things work. And this is where, again, having someone right across from you and having your classmates around you, seeing what they're doing, right? It's very valuable because we can see what to do, but we can also see what not to do, right? And again, I mean, again, I just ask you guys, right? I mean, how many of you guys have made models? Some of you guys have, some of you guys have not, right? So for some of you guys, this is brand new. But for some of you guys that you have worked on this, right, I mean, how long ago was that, right? I mean, I have, you know, my model making supplies, my model making tools, but I mean, especially now as an instructor, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's very limited the amount of time that I get to work on this. That's why this weekend, you know, again, pandemia, electoral stress, I really wanted to have fun and, and work on this. Right? So I, I gave myself some time to, you know, to, to play and, and just, you know, have fun, right? I mean, which is, you know, the, the one of the great parts about architecture school, the model making part, right? I mean, the, the, the building, you know, seeing your ideas and thoughts come to physical realms. So uh, be careful. Do have, um, let's see, I have my, my toolbox over here. Right, so you guys can see that the toolbox is over here. Um, I'll show you guys in a minute what I have here, but um, what I always recommend that you do have right on your toolbox is um, band aids. All right, band aids. So, for the most part, you know. The most important thing is to stop the bleeding, right? If that ever happens to you, right? So I would highly suggest that you throw some band-aids onto your toolkit. Um, <laughs> Jeanette, uh, band-aids, I did not expect that. Well, well, yeah, right? And I mean, again, we all want to jump into the fun part, which is model making. But before we do that, you know, I mean, let's 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 make sure. I mean, again, being in architecture school for six years and now being a faculty for seven years, we've seen stuff. Right? <laughs> we've seen stuff, right? I mean, I don't know how. Uh, I mean, I, I, I we can assume how, right? I mean, again, we're we're tired or we're distracted and things happen like that, right? So I've seen. I've had accidents, right? I mean, where I cut myself, and I've seen students cut themselves and have accidents, right? Um, now, on that, right? I mean, and this is not to freak anyone out. It's just, again, these are this is a conversation that must be had, right? 
Um, aside from hurting yourself, right? I mean, like, oh man, I cut myself, right? Aside from that, the problem is that depending where you cut yourself, I mean, it could maybe your thumb, it might be your index, your middle finger, wherever, right? I mean, once you cut yourself, you know, you stop the bleeding, you, you have your band-aid and whatnot, what happens? Well, you have your band-aid there, but, but, but it hurts, right? I mean, it's just, it hurts. And it might be, it's not like the end of the world, right? Hopefully. But it's, it's, in, it's uncomfortable, right? I mean, and it's annoying. So especially when you cut yourself, you know, your, your fingers or wherever, right? You, you need those fingers to keep working. Right. So what I'm trying to say is that it may not be the end of the world if you cut yourself, but it might it might draw you back. Right. Meaning that an injury, just like a, a, an athlete, right? I mean, sends you back. Right. I mean, after you injure yourself, you're not going to be able to work as fast until you heal. Right. So that's for me. That's something the most annoying part. It's not just it's not the cutting act. Right? If you were able to cut yourself and just heal automatically, that would be no problem, right? The problem is that you have that band-aid there, and again, you need to hold your pencil, you need to hold your knives and tools, and it's like uncomfortable, right? I mean, it's like trying to run or walk after you have, you know, uh, an injury on your ankle or, or feet or foot, right? Or trying to walk when you have like a little pebble on your foot, right, on your shoe, right? It's just uncomfortable. So... Lastly, right, in order to lure you away from getting injured, what can happen is that after you injure yourself, you cut yourself, well, what happens when you cut yourself, right? If you're human, right, you most likely will bleed, right? And, you know, you know, what sometimes for me was even more annoying when I would injure myself is that I would get my model dirty, right? I cut myself, but in this case, for example, we're going to be working with white material, Right, so a drop of blood it could be, you know, it, it will be evident on the model. And again, now I'm injured. I cut myself. I cannot work as fast, and I need to redo that piece because it's 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 dirty, right? It's messy. So you see how this is a whole kind of a sequence, event, like a snowball, right? Um, so be careful, right? Again, be prepared. Have band aids. Have uh. You know, have like a little or, or like a little package of clinics um, in your toolbox so that you can just wipe it off or just some 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 napkins or something, right? Because uh, you are gonna need it just in case. Um, but other than that, I mean, you should be fine, right? You should be fine. You'll survive. Um, don't just don't be just be smart. All right, so. Getting that out of the way, um, I think let's get started, right? So I have this drawing. Any questions so far? Nothing? Comments? No, good. All right. So it's so good. Hopefully I kind of, uh, you know, I kind of let's scare you to not get injured all right don't get injured all right guys so we have our assignment for today is create a uh, two and a half by two and a half by two and a half paper box i'm missing right here there you go all right a paper box a poster board box and a white foam board box right Weed conceal edges. We'll talk about what that means. All right. So let's get, let's get started with the with the first one right here. So two and a half by two and a half by two and a half paper box. All right. All right. Class, help me out. How would you start this model right here? The two by two by two. How would you start if I as as if I am asking you, right? All right, um, class, please build a two and a half by two and a half by two and a half paper box, right? 
What would you do first? How would you go about this? What do we do? Jeanette, measuring the pieces, drawing them on paper. All right, good. But yes, right, I mean, definitely, right? That is something that, that we need to start doing. So I don't know how this is gonna work, but we'll see it right here. Uh, I'm also trying to learn with these tools right here. For example, okay, there we go. All right, so we have that right here. So that's what we're after, right? The, the two and a half, uh, like two and a half by two and a half box right there, All right? So Jeanette says, measuring the pieces, drawing them on paper, right? Correct, right? What do we call that? Right, what do we call that? Well, we call that your template. Right? I mean, we call that your um, basically your your blueprint, if you will, for the cube. Now, how would that look? Right? How how would that look? On on drawn drawn right? And I do not get used to this right here. How would that look? Right. So, okay. So, okay. Let's start with, let's start. Help me out right here. How many, how many faces does a box have? All right. All right. So we have six faces, right? All right. Why is that important? Or how do I use this information? So Jeanette says, you need six different pieces to put together. Okay, now let me ask you guys this. Does that mean, right, that then, okay, so I have one box right here, right? So again, this would be, oh man, this is really uncomfortable. Two and a half, right? right. Um, so, okay, so does that mean that I have one piece right there? Another piece right there. Another piece like that. So do I draw them like this on paper and then cut them like that? What do you guys say? What do you guys think? All right, so Crystal, you need six pieces that are pieces that are two and a half by two and a half. All right, so I have five on one right here. Then wouldn't you need a little tab to glue to each other, right? Well, what do you guys what do you guys think, right? I mean, that's correct, right? I mean, I I would assume, Jeanette, right? So if that's the case, how does does that change? Does that change maybe how I'm planning this? You could connect them and fold them. All right, Isis. What do you mean, Isis? I think you're onto something. Draw them together and add a tab to close the figure when you're done folding. You draw them all together and then fold them, says Matthew. Oh man, I think you guys have done this before. Right? And excuse my my curvy lines. I'm getting used to drawing with you know this trackpad right here that you know the school got us, but it is so hard to use. So I like what you guys are saying, right? I mean, are you guys familiar with this kind of drawing right here, right? Whoa, whoa. 
right? Yes, yes, yes. All right, excellent. All right. Okay. All right. So we have that right there. And again, this should all be beautifully connected. But geez, man. All right, we have something like that. And now you guys are saying saying something about a tabs, right? Tabs, right? What are those tabs for? What do you guys mean with those tabs? Or why? Why? I, I have my six pieces right here, no? One, two, three, four, five, six. You, you guys are saying that I need more pieces? What do you guys mean? Tabs on the ends of some of them to glue them together. Mm. Well, I mentioned a tab because I thought that you would have to cut each of one individually. All right. So, uh, Luis Salcedo. So, where do I, where, where do these tabs go? And how many of them do I need? Where, where do they go? Where do they go? Is this what you guys are talking about? Kind of like that. Fourteen taps total. Do I need fourteen taps? Do I need? Wow, that's a lot of taps. What do you guys think? I'm so bad at this. <laughs> well, you see, that, that that's what we're doing this, right? So you see how I'm having to kind of like get the information from you guys, right? One tap on square one and three taps on squares five and six. All right. Well, let's try it out, right? Andrea Parada says seven, right? Um, I think Andrea is onto something right there. So the magic number is seven, or is it? Five, six, seven. Tell you what, let's try it out. Why don't we do this, right? I mean, let's try it out right now. So get yourself, that's why you'll need your piece of paper right here, right? Um, let's start with paper. This is just typing paper. It's not the poster board. If you don't have printer paper, so, okay, so number one, go to your printer and get some paper. If you don't have some, maybe your sketchbook. Uh, if you don't have some, maybe, I think you'll find something. No, I mean recycle. You can just recycle uh, a sheet of paper, right? And we can do that. I want you guys to draw, right, the box, right, or the template for the box, so that we can cut it and build it. And how many tabs do we need? All right, let's find that out. So by the way, it's, today's gonna be like a hands-on thing, right? We're gonna be working together. So um, if you do not have your stuff, um, well, you have a couple of options, right? I mean, you could be working on, you know, the, the, the labs or the other assignments from class, or, well, you know, just uh, utilize your time, however you, you see fit, whatever you think uh, it's best for you. All right, so let's do that.
Oh, what were the dimensions again? Right here, guys. Um, wait, not, not there. Right here. It's kind of hard to see, huh? Let's see. I don't know how to increase the thickness of this, but that should be a two and a half. It's a two and a half cube. So how do we start this? How do we do this? What are you guys doing? Well, I don't know about you guys, right? But I'm creating these uh, lines right here on my paper right here. I'm using the, uh, my cutting mat as a guide right here and the ruler, right? And I'm creating a grid personally, myself, right? A grid that is um, three by four.
Uh, Jeanette, do you want us to draw the taps in or just the squares for now? Well, what do you guys think in order to in order to put this box together, this paper box together? Do you think that we need to draw the taps? Yeah, right. I think so. Right. Um, okay. So let's let's do that. Right. And I think uh, Luis says, right, Mr. Sacedo says that one tap on square one. Right. We're talking about this drawing right here. Um, and maybe let me update that right here. So let me go ahead and. Oh man. I, my masterpiece right here. Let me update it. Oh, wow. All right. Let's update this. Let me update that based on. Um, so, Mr. Salcedo says that we need. Well, let me first of all close this thing off. Right, one tap on. Natalia, what are the dimensions for the taps? I don't know, guys. What do you guys think? How big should these tabs be? What do you think, Natalia? What do you guys think? What are you going to say? Half an inch? Eighth of an inch? Um, I suppose the shape of the tab is edge on the end so that it doesn't show or can they be any shape? That's a good question, right? I mean, let's try it out. What do you guys say? I, 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 I'm drawing the tabs like that. I guess that's how I've seen them, but do you think I think that work? Isis says, I'm doing a quarter of an inch. Isis is calling it. She's not waiting for anyone. She's not allowing on anyone to tell her anything. She's going with it. I like that, Isis. I like that. She needs no one's authorization. Well, let's look at something, right? So again, it depends what kind of what area you're working with, right? It's because she's the birthday girl. Oh, is she? She's a birthday girl. Is it, is it your birthday, Isis? All right. Well, happy birthday. Yeah. On a beautiful Monday um, in class. All right. The dream. Let me thicken this so you guys can see this. Yeah, so, so did you celebrate this weekend, uh, Isis, or are you celebrating today? As you should, or is it your birthday week? Or is it your birthday week? There's people that like, take their the entire week, no? even the month I kind of do that whenever whenever September hits I'm like yeah it's my birthday month it's my month
and let's see how this looks. All right, guys. So, can you guys see my screen? So, let me close this blanks here. Okay, right? Let me pull it. Let me. It's getting kind of messy here. question for you guys this is what's going on right here right so this is what I have right now do you guys have something like this right now so far yes right good smaller though why wait wait why is it smaller what's going on Vivian talk to me what do you mean smaller so what are the dimensions two and a half inches Right, two and a half inches. Running. So All right. What do you mean? Well, I did, oh, you did centimeters? Oops, let me make a new one. Didn't realize that. Ah, uh, you guys see instructions, guys, instructions, right? So two and a half, right? See, that's what we're doing this exercise right here, because we're warming up. Uh, two and a half, two and a half, right? So this column is two and a half. This column is two and a half, right? So why am I showing you guys this right now? Oh, let's see, what is this? There we go. This was a little bit creepy. This thing. What is that? All right. So why am I showing you guys this, or why am I looking at this? Well, because we were asking, you guys were asking about those tabs, no? And again, I think we. And I'm gonna write on this one. I'm gonna note it up. All right. So I think we have something like this is a. Phase one, this is phase two, three, four, five, six, right? And I think we were talking of doing tabs here, right? So I'll just put like a T over here, right? And then a T over here, T over here, T over here, T over here, and T over here, and a T over here. Allegedly, right? Allegedly, right? So, you know, why am I showing you guys? Well, because some of you guys were asking about these tabs, right? I mean, how big should these tabs be? Now, there's only a limited amount of space that I have here, right? You see? So we only have, I have right now, half inch right here, right? Um, I'll say, sure, why not? That's, that's one less that we can avoid, right? So we can do that. We can we can avoid that. And if you have tools, you can use a um, you can use a triangle, right? Uh, this is kind of large. Uh, it'd be nice if. I don't know if I do or not, but um, if you have a smaller triangle that is a um, 45, 45, 90, I would maybe use that, but I don't. I have this larger one, right? So I can use this to draw my angle for the tabs right here so that it's sharp and nice. Okay. So you can do that. Can do that. Okay. 
right? So I'm using my 45, 45, 90 triangle. Do the taps now. I can do the taps with any angle, right? I mean, I could use this uh, 30 degree angle. Um, I could use the 60, right? But technically speaking, there's there's a reason, right, why 45 works nicely. And we'll we'll realize about that. Uh, Uh, Nadim says the outer parts of my paper can barely fit the tabs. Is it all right to make the tabs any size at the moment? Um, I think so. So this is see, this is where it's hard. Like I'm not really sure what's going on, Nadim. Um, but I'll say yes. Let's um, what's that say? Adapt, overcome, whatever. So. Adapt, overcome, survive, or something. So we might need to re-strategize Nadim, but I don't know. If we're kind of like following along, it should kind of work. Now, if any of you guys is courageous enough uh, to turn on your camera, if you have any questions and, you know, I mean, you might want to show us your project, you know, I'll definitely come back at you and say if anyone wants to, you know, share their progress. But, of course, don't feel like you must. Don't feel like you must, but, you know, again, I would like to give you you know, see how some of you guys are, are doing over there at home. And also, if you have any questions, you know, I mean, in terms like Nadim, you know, you're asking about that question. I would maybe ask you to, like, well, can you show us what's going on? That would be really help. I would show my camera. I would show, but my camera is on my desktop and it doesn't move. Oh, man. But yeah, I mean, that happens, so that's fine. All right, guys. So, what do you guys think? Am I on the right track? What do you think the, ta the taps would work?
Boom. How's everyone doing? Is everyone here? All right, so what's the next step? I learned to create this uh, beautiful paper box. Cut, right? Cut. Right? Cutting. How do we do this? What are we going to need? Exacto, says William. All right. Well, all right. Could be an exacto knife or a utility knife. Right. Now, let's talk about our handy dandy scissors. Right. Let's talk about scissors. So they are great tools, right? They're, they're of course something that you know we, we really need. Um, however, I would actually advise you not to do this kind of cuts with the scissors, right? Um, you know, as we go through the exercises, you'll see how important it's going to be that each of these lines is straight, right? So I would actually advise you not to use scissors for these cuts, right? Do not use. Um, Scissors. I would say try to use your exacto, right? Which is this guy right here. Right, so have it. Um, or your utility knife and a uh, cutting mat, of course. Right, so this is a, a tiny one. And of course, a metal straight edge. Right. Next thing should do this. Let's do this. Right. So when you're cutting with your your straight edge and your utility knife or exacto, right? The number of things right here. Right. The first one is well, you see how I've actually, you know, the straight edge has this uh, cork backing so that it doesn't slide. Right. You see how I have actually, you know, flipped it, and I like I like to use it flip just so I don't get that, that shadow right there. But you know, you can use it either way. Now, when you're using with the cork down, it's nice because it's it's a, it has a grip, right? I can you know kind of just do this. That's right there, right? So there's there's that, right? Or like I said, I can flip it like this. Just be careful, right? This is where how accidents can happen. This is a this is a really classic. This is a classic accident, right? That you have your straight edge right here. And you're about to cut, right? But somehow this blade gets out of gets out of track, right? And I don't know if you guys can see, but I have this gnarly scar, right? That happened to me, you know, um, I think in second year of architecture school, um, you know, where I was, you know, using I don't know what I was using as a guide, and then all of a sudden the the blade got out of track. And it cut my, I, I cut my finger like this, right? And it actually went a little bit into my nail. And it was a pretty messy scar. And it was a pretty messy um, accident. And it was one of those where, again, uh, I was not, I was not just uh, upset that I cut myself, but upset that I messed up my, my model, right? So be careful with that. Um, other than that, always have, now, ironically, you, of course, always want to have a really sharp blade, 
um, a big part for successful model making is uh, in sharp blade at all times. Right? Uh, the exacto knife blades, I find that they go dull faster. So I leave those for details. And I use this utility blade knife um, just for, you know, kind of like this generic kind of cuts, whatever that means. But you always want to keep uh, switching the blades from your tools. And like I said, avoid, do not use this plastic um, tools to cut. Right? Um, they're not meant for that. Um, you will kind of slide kind of into it and you can cut them. Uh, and again, you'll cut your finger like I mentioned before, right? Um, so these plastic ones, you know, be very careful because these blades will cut through this one right here, um, and, and you really, you know, can, can get hurt if, if that happens. How are you guys doing? Do you guys have your cross? Not yet? Still cutting it out. No worries, all right? Let's meet here. Let's meet, let's meet here. I have mine right here. Oh, what you got, Jeanette? All right, cool. So I see that you have the, uh, hey, and you figured your camera out. Uh, can, can we see? So do you have uh, well, the- Well, my the, camera's like, my desktop is like on. Your what? The camera's built into my, my computer. That's why. OK. All right. So you have the seven tabs, right? OK. Yes. So then now, now what? What's the next step? Folding? Um, you don't sound too, uh, too confident about it. Oh, no, Jeanette, are we listening to you? <laughs> All right, yes, well, Jeanette did not sound very confident there. Uh, my signal was bad. Yeah, yes, no, I know, I understand. The cutting. Yes. All right, so Jeanette is right. Next right. thing is to cut. Let's, um, you know, let's maybe go for a minute or two, maybe for everyone to catch up, and we'll continue. Right. Let me go for a coffee refill.
All right, how's everyone doing? Do we have a faults yet or not? So let's talk about this folding action right here. Right? I mean, because again, we're trying to put this thing into a box, right? And we're trying to kind of like fold it, right? And use our tabs so that we can then assemble it. Now folding, right? So we gotta fold, right, this tab like that, right? I mean, again, well, you have two options, right? I mean, we can fold everything inwards, right? Kind of like this, or if you fold it, I guess, outward, right? Having all of our marks on the inside. I think this is harder, right? Because we're gonna be kind of like hiding our guides. Right? So I would advise to do it like this, I mean, fold inwards. All right now when we're doing these folds right again you can just kind of i like this or we could also right grab a guide right in this case you know this tool right here you know and i'm not going to cut but i'm just going to fold right here all right so you see how i'm using this this edge right there to assist myself and make these cuts right here, right? Because we want to have a really clean or as clean as an of an edge as we can. I mean, we really want to have this clean edge right here, right? And the same for all your folds over here, right? So I'd actually advise you, right, I mean, to grab, you know, a tool or, you know, a ruler, right? You can do this. And again, I can fold this one. I'm not cutting it. You know, I'm just using it to fold it, you see? And I can use another tool, right? In this case, this little scale. And kind of like fold this right here. You see? Right. So again, using this edge right here to assist me to fold this. All right. And I can continue doing that. So again, you really want to keep all of these edges as sharp as possible, right? And again, I mean clean, right?
Alright guys, do we have something? Okay, kinda like that. Right, it's not glued yet. Let's talk about gluing. Right? How's everyone doing? So everyone's somewhere here. Done folding, finish up the folds. All right, great. So now, what's next? What's next, guys? Gluing, all right. What, what do you guys have in mind in terms of gluing this thing right here? Give me options, give me ideas. What do you guys think? Glue stick? What else? Elmer's? So let's use our Elmer's. Okay? Let's use our, our Elmer's. I mean, the glue stick is going to work. However, the glue stick is not going to work for the next models that we're going to do. So I'd advise us to um, start experimenting with Elmer's. Now, have you guys used Elmer's before? I think so, right? I think so. Right? I think, I think pretty much everyone has used it, right? Now, in terms of using it, right, what I like to do, I'll just show you guys, I'll share with you guys what I like to do. I think there's an official name for this, I don't know what it is, right? But what I like to do is grab a scrap piece of uh, material, in this case it's just a scrap piece of footwork. And what I like to do is to actually dispense, you know, a puddle of Elmer's glue right here. Does anyone do this or has anyone done this before? Why would I want to do this? Isis, yes. You do this, Isis? Why do you do this? What do, what do you get out of it? Sometimes it helps me like brush the glue on to make it cleaner instead of just trying to put it straight onto like the paper yeah right you have more do you say that you have more control over it yes sir mm, like that um so yeah that's that's correct right i mean um you know on the uh on one hand right i mean the inclination might be to just grab your glue so kind of applying here but that's one of the main ways or a, a good way to mess things up right uh it's it's a big bottle it's a big nozzle it's a tiny area and we're gonna work with even smaller areas so what i would advise and what i like to do and what i like to share with you guys and you'll tell me you test things out some of things some things might work for you some of them might not work for you that's okay but at least you can try it out right at least you can give it a go so again i like to um pump pump if you will some glue onto a scrap piece of paper Kind of like let it there, sit there for a little bit, grab a toothpick, right? And I use the toothpick as a little palita, right? Like as a little scoop, right? And rather than applying, right, I mean straight onto the, the model, right? I mean, I like to, you know, just pick up a little, little dabble, right? A little dab of that. And then I'll use this, right? I mean, to spread it on the paper. You'll see that with glue. Most of the time, the inclination is that it's just to go all out, right? Like, like dump that thing on it, right? But again, that's a really good way of creating a mess, right? So actually with glue, and you'll see that with glue, a little bit goes a long way, all right? So, 
part of it is also right seeing how do you want to start this i mean how do you want to start this gluing sequence i'll let you figure that one out whatever is um whatever is convenient for you right but i will tell you that you know i will pick a corner right here find the tap and again using this technique with the glue right here you see that it's just you know a few drops right here right let's see let's see that right there you go right there and especially since this is liquid right this is a, a uh, you see how it, sh it shrinks right it wrinkles that's why you don't want to put too much because it, it wrinkles too much right you really really don't want to do that and you really don't want that whenever you are pressing them together right you don't want to have that excess glue leak through the corner right through the edge you don't want that on the edge because it's going to make your model messy right so you see how i have um glued that right there and then i apply more pressure to it but lesson here guys is that glue a little bit goes long way right a little bit will go for a long way all right and there i have my first um edge and my first corner glued together i'm gonna do the next one and like i said guys you know just a little dab right there on the uh the tip of your toothpick right and you know very gracefully you know just it's like nothing guys it really is especially with paper you'll see that you really don't need a lot right and then we close it together right and then we apply pressure all right so i have two corners two edges glued there now yeah so i have this other open one right here and then these three ones right here which is just gonna close like this all right let's try that Easy on the glue, guys. Easy on the glue. And since this one is kind of like a cap, right? It's gonna kind of like fold anywhere. I'm actually gonna do two taps at a time, meaning that I'm gonna put glue in both of them. However, I need to do this kind of quickly so that the other one doesn't kind of like dry out too much. All right? I'll be fine. All right? So that I can close it all together at once. Okay. I'm gonna do this carefully, all right? So I'm gonna come over here, all right? So I pick one edge, all right? So that one's done. And I'll come on this side and do the next one. All right, there we go. And then I can, for now, fold this one outwards so that I, it gives me room to work on this. the glue trick oh, well you know there it is I actually learned that from my dad actually he's a woodworker so uh, kind of taught me that, that process there. Um, right so I just need this last one right here right the top one which you know arguably could be the trickiest one So I'll do the 
the last one right here. But again, guys, one of the main, so a few things, whenever we're grading your models, and honestly, I would rather you guys create your models. I, I, would, I would rather you guys do this for yourself, not just because your instructor is looking for this, but I can tell you that whenever we're looking at someone's models, uh, and whenever they're not looking right, it's, it's, it's a common thing what's not working, all right? Number one, the first one, it's evident that this person did not measure correctly. I think it all starts there, guys. Remember that say, measure twice at once. All right, guys, well, that applies critically for us here in architecture school, right? If your template, right, which is the first thing that we drew, is off, everything's going to be off, guys. If your initial grid is off, everything's going to be very, very bad. So that's number one, right? Number one is that make your traces first. So just like a building, right? Buildings need a strong foundation, right? Well, everything else needs a strong foundation. And the foundation for this model, for example, was the initial template that you see right there on my screen, right? Where they were drawing it, right? So if my lines are crooked, right? And, and per Hey guys, sorry about that. My screensaver kicked in. Yeah, I know, I'm here. But my my screensaver kicked in and it kind of like freaked out. Can, can you guys see me? I mean, I'm sorry, can you guys hear me? And can you guys see me now? Yes, I think you guys can. Uh, hear you, yes. And can you guys see me? Yes. 